For our next four lessons, what we're going to be referring to is something that's important is this idea here called a carbonyl group. Now, by definition, a carbonyl group is where you have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. Now, there are four examples of where we see this in organic chemistry. We see this with aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and esters. So this lesson can be focusing specifically on an aldehyde. Now, an aldehyde, by definition, is where you've got any sort of carbon chain attached to a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, bonded to a hydrogen. So therefore, because this can't be in the middle, it has to be on the end. That's a really key idea. If it's anywhere in the middle, so instead this was some other sort of carbon chain, that would make it a ketone. That's a big difference between an aldehyde and a ketone. Aldehydes are always found on the end, ketones are found in the middle. So yet again, we're reviewing here. In an aldehyde, at least one hydrogen is attached to the carbonyl group. Whereas in a ketone, they can be attached anywhere. So, similar rules to what we've done so far. If we remember our priority list here, what you're going to notice is that aldehyde and ketones are above everything that we've learned before. This will be important when we're trying to name something with the end suffix of an al or a one. Okay, So when you have an aldehyde, the ending by definition becomes al. We don't need to include numbers on this because at the end of the day, because it always has to have an oxygen attached to a hydrogen, we know that it has to be on the end of the carbon chain. Therefore, we don't have to identify it because it's always at spot one. So if we look at this example right here, this is going to be known as methanol. Why? One carbon, and we have an ending of an al. This is also known as formaldehyde. This is the stuff that helps keep uh, living tissues preserved. In this example, this is going to be ethanol. Yet again, al for the ending because this is an aldehyde group, and the aldehyde must go on the end. Propanol, same thing. It's on the end. So if we look at this example, is this example right here, we can see it's a four carbon chain, so it's going to be a but. Because this is going to be our ending, this is by definition spot one, which means at spot three, we've got our methyl group. So if we put it all together, what we're going to see is that with three methyl butanol. If you look at our next example right here, very similar. We've got a three carbon chain, so therefore it's going to be a probe. And by definition, this is always on the end, so this is spot one. At spot three, we've got a chloro. So therefore, the name of this compound is going to be 3 chloropropanol So if we're looking at this example right here, we can see methyl at spot four, and it's a six carbon chain. So six carbon chain means it's a hexan. The suffix has to be an al because there's an aldehyde on the end. And the prefix is 4-methyl. So if we put it all together, it's 4-methyl hexanal. This one here is a little bit more complicated. We've got it is a 10-carbon chain. So therefore, we know it's going to be a known anal of some sort. Aldehyde has to be spot 1. We've got an ethanol at spot 3. And we've got a methyl, a methyl group at spot six. Because of alphabetic rules, this has to come first. So therefore, it is going to be decan because it's 10, suffix al because there's an aldehyde on the end. So it's 3-ethyl, 6-methyl. So therefore, overall, it's called 3-ethyl, 6-methyl decanal. So if we want to draw 5-ethyl, 4-methyl octanal, well, octanal means we've got 8 carbons. So we can do 3. So there's our 8-carbon chain. The ending is going to be right here. Could it be on the other end? Absolutely. But we're going to arbitrarily put that there. So there's our octanal. We can see at this is spot 1, 2, 3, 4. At spot 4. We have to do a methyl group. And at spot five, we have to do an ethyl group. So that would be one way we could draw this. So if we break it down, we know the root's going to have eight carbons. It's going to be an aldehyde, so therefore it has to be Al. 
and we have to put a methyl on C4 and an ethyl on C5. Drawing it another way, we can draw eight carbons. We can put our aldehyde on the end. We've got our methyl group right there. And we can put CH2, CH3 right there. And rather than have you watch me draw out the carb, the hydrogen, I'll just hit pause and throw them in there really quickly.